high-profile former Israeli lawmaker and government minister faced the death penalty here in Israel for handing state secrets to Iran. Thanks for tuning in for your daily dose. Former minister Gonen Segev is charged with spying for an enemy, handing over sensitive information about Israel's energy infrastructure and the location of security centers. Prosecutors say he was an active Iranian agent. He had visited Iran several times to meet his handlers. Never before has such a high-level lawmaker, a former cabinet member, been accused of being an enemy spy. Talk about this earth-shattering story. God Shimron. God is a former Israeli Mossad operative, also a decorated author. God, thanks so much for being with us. Thank First you. question, Israel's justice ministry confirms that the death penalty will, in fact, be an option for prosecutors to pursue as the case moves forward. Your thoughts on that word being used, the death penalty? Uh, the only ones executed in Israel are Nazis. The only case of execution in the history of Israel is Adolf Eichmann in 1962. I can assure you, Gonen Segev will spend many years in prison, but he will not face a firing squad. Uh, uh, so the Shin Bet, I want to point out, much of this case remains under gag order. We don't know many details, but the Shin Bet says he was an active agent. He'd visited Iran several times. How damaging is the info he would have, he would have had access to that he could have handed over? First of all, it's a great victory for the Iranians, you know, having such a high value source in Israel. Um, you know, think about a conference in Tehran with the highest uh, uh, security officials and the, uh, uh, the chief of the foreign uh, information of the foreign intelligence service says, gentlemen, I'm very happy to announce that we have a very high source in Israel. Because in the eyes of the Iranian, you know, a uh, uh, minister of energy, it's number three or number four in uh, the cabinet. Now, the truth is that whatever information he had is 20 years old. But still, he knows much more than I do and than you do about the infrastructure of Israel, you know, where the major gas lines go, the major electric power stations, the emergency power stations, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we'll talk, this, is very, this is very valuable. Very valuable and could be very damaging. Without, God, let me turn back to you. There have been other politicians, lawmakers, scientists who have been accused of or convicted of spying for an enemy. What sets this apart? Is it just his, his rank, the, the wealth of information he had at some point in his career? I think there are two differences. There's one, you know, there are many Israelis who spied against Israel because of ideological reasons, you know, for the Soviets, for the Arabs, for example, Azmi Bishara, a former member of Knesset. So we have a few of them that will play on the screen here. Right, yeah, okay, there are quite many. There were quite a few also who, out of greed, sheer greed, you know, worked for the Russians. For example, Colonel Levinson, who was chief of the Prime Minister's Security Office. Um, but no doubt that this is, from, from pure intelligence point of view, it's a very big success for the Iranian uh, intelligence, whether he was recruited or whether he had uh, volunteered, we don't know. What do you make of his uh, reported defense that for him it wasn't greed and it wasn't ideology, it was pride. He, he was a disgraced former lawmaker. His name is used only in jokes, really, at this point. He wanted to return to Israel a hero one day, and he wanted to be a double agent. Well, you know, uh, there's one case in world history during the Second World War where the British uh, intelligence managed to really double or capture all the German uh, spies working in Great Britain at the time. I think uh, Segev maybe read too many books and he thought he's going to, maybe, I don't know, what, uh, confuse the Iranians or anything. I have here a very funny book called uh, Special Operations Executive Manual from the Second World War, How to Be an Agent in Occupied Europe. It's 70 years old. Still, you know, principles are the same. Not a single one can fit Gunen Segev. He's somebody who lies even when he asks a question. So how can he fool the Iranians? I want to ask them, therefore, why wasn't he caught sooner? Why wasn't this prevented? He didn't go to Iran just once. He went to Iran several times. He met multiple times with Iranian handlers around the world. Yes, he is under arrest now, but should this have been stopped sooner? Well, we, have, we still don't have all the details. Much of it is under gag order. Everything is under gag, almost. We don't know how it was brought to the country. It was, I think, a Mossad operation or a Shabak operation, if you ask my opinion. Um, maybe, at a, maybe it was spotted at an early stage and there was even somebody was thinking of, you know, doubling him, making him a double agent, a real double agent. A true one, yeah. A true one, but uh, uh, they found out that he's not reliable. You know, he's, he's not a reliable person. 
no doubt this has to be uh, has to be uh, investigated. And I want also to say, for many years, I myself, I've been saying the fact that a top Iranian spy hadn't been caught in Israel is not because there isn't one operating in Israel. It's simply because he wasn't caught. I think this is case for Israel to be a little bit more modest, you know, about we are very good in spying. And the show of Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu a few weeks ago with the Iranian atomic secrets is very nice. But please remember, others can do it too.